Purgative, introspective, and cathartic are three adjectives that are rarely used to describe stories that come out in the anime and manga sphere. Discussions are usually filled with words like raw and kino instead, since most readers are meatheads. While the medium is beloved for some incredibly emotional or grandly hopeful stories, finding a story that fits these words is rare. Goodbye Eri is a one-shot that was recently released by renowned author Tatsuki Fujimoto. The story comes as his second major one-shot release between the incredibly coveted manga Chainsaw Man and his highly anticipated part 2 of Denji's story. Following the amazing one-shot Look Back, Fujimoto has recently been found to switch gears from the shonen battle genre to put out some stories that he has wished to write for some time now. The story follows a middle school kid called Yuta as he films his mother's battle with cancer and eventually stumbles into a girl named Eri as he tries to internalize his loss. I'd like to issue a heavy spoiler warning for this one shot. If you haven't read it, then I'd highly suggest to go read the manga and come back to the video. Allow me to give you a little refresher. The story starts with our 12 year old protagonist Yuta celebrating his birthday by recording some footage through his new phone, which was gifted to him by his parents. However, this gift comes with a caveat for Yuta, with his mother requesting him to start recording videos and clips of her as she reveals her terminal illness asking Yuta to record some clips of her so that he could remember her in the future. Apprehensively, Yuta does accept, as we catch some moments of the family doing activities as the mother's health slowly declines in the background. As we glimpse into their lives, it all heads to the fore as we witness the dad drive Yuta to the hospital for his mother's final moments. Here though, we witness Yuta unable to process the guilt, as it cuts to a third person perspective and we see the hospital explode behind him. It's revealed as a movie to the audience, which is met with an extremely negative response to the rather tone-deaf and rather disrespectful finishing shot to an extremely sensitive movie. Met with a scathing criticism, Yuta is pushed to the edge as he records a suicide video and a goodbye message. However, as he is about to jump, we meet Eri. This mystery girl, a rather mysterious figure, gives Yuta a monologue about how the movie was great but it was frustrating and promises him to guide him to make a movie that would make everyone move to tears. With this goal set, the pair goes on a journey of consuming numerous movies, analyzing and discussing them along the way while they embark on this semi-fictional autobiographical movie about Yuta and his life with Eri. However, this is Fujimoto we're talking about. Eri eventually falls sick and we come to find out that she is also suffering from a terminal illness and wants Yuta to finish the one thing he couldn't do for his mother. Record her final moments. Alright, now that we're all caught up, I have a few thoughts on this manga. Let's talk about formatting and the use of paneling first. The manga is formatted in an incredibly cinematic way, with a feeling like a short movie rather than a one-shot to be honest. An absolute masterclass in paneling and formatting on Fujimoto's part, the way the film reel like frame by frame way the manga is drawn allows the readers to read and experience the manga in their own pace, with each panel acting as a frame of a film instead of a standard manga panel. Fujimoto himself also repeats a lot of frames to portray these small micro emotions that humans in the story express in their day to day lives. From moments like the way Eri and Yuta watch movies together, or Yuta himself using the camera, we're shown blurry camera movements that are taken between shots as Yuta walks around the school or the neighborhood. This film reel style panel also allows Fujimoto to blend reality with Yuta's film and the camera footage, leaving the reader often unsure whether we're actually re witnessing reality or a part of Yuta's movie. It's a genuinely incredible way to use a basic part of the medium of manga itself that, you know, it easily elevates the reading experience into an almost movie-like quality that blends fiction and reality together. Yuta's mother is a character that is written as such so that her role and depth as Yuta's mother is only recontextualized after your first read. Incredibly well designed and executed by Fujimoto, she starts off as an almost caring mother who wishes to live on in Yuta's memories at the start. What we see when we peel through the layers though was an abusive TV producer only looking to condition Yuta into making a documentary about her through a disingenuous layer of care. Being a relatively simple character, Fujimoto executes her narrative arc and significance perfectly on this character as she fulfills her role in the story. What really recontextualizes her even further is the way that her arc is in parallel with Eri herself. Yuta's mother, 
callous and abusive, scolds and is seen to beat Yuta into taking the perfect shot that she wants as a TV producer herself. Only ever viewing him as an outlet for recording, go as far as even calling him useless on her deathbed as her own son struggles to process the fact that his mother was going to die. Eri, on the other hand, nurtures Yuta through helping him by allowing him to watch movies and giving him his own agency to create the story he wanted rather than the one Eri wanted made of her. Even as she was in the hospital, she was always asking Yuta what he would do with the clips. At the end of the day, Though both died, Eri was the better mentor and a more cathartic personal experience for Yuta, as she even gave him the opportunity to redeem himself by doing the one thing that he couldn't, film his mother when she passed away. I also want to highlight about how Yuta's personality is and how he uses movie making as a, a crutch per se. Yuta is a 12 year old boy at the start of this one shot and possibly 14 around when Eri dies. He's a child who's dealt with back to back losses in his life struggling to process grief of losing people in his adolescence. We even see him as a man, possibly in his late 40s near the end, with the same problem. And how does he cope with it? By recording it. As he said it himself, he could only ever face the facts in front of a camera. Coping mechanisms are an extremely interesting window into the people that they inhibit. They can range from incredibly unhealthy or even dangerous to something that everyone should do. From eating disorders, drugs, alcohol, to sports or hobbies, I believe these activities shape the person that uses them that, to allow themselves to let these feelings bottled inside of them to manifest and to deal with it. Yuta mentions how he's always viewed every problem that he's ever had from an outside perspective. A person shaped by the death around him, he had reached his breaking point multiple times by now. By using the camera to give himself that outside perspective, he uses movie making as his own cathartic experience to face the facts and try to rationalize the death around his life. It's the only place that he can be true to himself, and the only place that he can possibly put his own problems under perspective. The blend with fiction and reality in this manga is also extremely interesting. We are never explicitly shown or told when the camera's off, since it's always in this film role, frame by frame, paneling art style. It's truly one of a kind, as this provides us with the experience of never reaching that separation point and leaving a lot of it onto the reader themselves. Is Aria a vampire? Is Yuta's story all a movie? Or is it real life? Is this manga itself a movie or is it a real life tale that switches between fiction and reality? Perhaps. After all, what's a movie without a pinch of fantasy? This manga resonated with me a lot. If I'm going to be honest, this is the reason that this channel exists right now. Reading this from start to finish multiple times over has really just awoke this deep passion of content creation I've always had and I can't thank Fujimoto enough for it. Reading this manga was a somewhat purgative and introspective experience for me as I could relate to Yuta in certain terms through his character arc, in terms of the people who surround him, to the circumstances he grew up in. And it really just invoked this inner creator in me that has longed for a reason to pick up the camera and record. And I can't express any more gratitude to Fujimoto himself. The evolution of Tatsuki Fujimoto and what's next is extremely interesting. As this video finishes up, I can't help but admire Fujimoto's incredible rise in his storytelling, art, paneling, implicit characters, and his drive to create different styles of stories. From Fire Punch, Chainsaw Man, to Look Back, and now Goodbye Eri, he's truly transcending the genre itself, and I can't wait to read what's next. The new chapter of Chainsaw Man Part 2 has just come out, so go have a read. It's incredible, and I can't wait for more Fujimoto. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe. I'd highly appreciate it.